Hello everyone. Welcome to the second video of the chapter probability. So, as you have seen in the previous video, I have told you the basic introduction, basic meaning of the term probability. What probability is and how to identify. So, in this video, we'll be seeing what is experimental probability and what is theoretical probability, okay? So, basically, probability is of two types. One is based on experiments, okay? And another is based on theory, theory or it is theoretical. So we'll know, try to know what is experimental probability and what is theoretical probability in this video. So without wasting any time, let us start. So I have already written the few points, few key points related to this. And let me tell you, let me explain what they are. So as you can see here, experimental probability, let me explain this first, okay? So experimental probability, see, if I will tell you, it is based on experiments or in other words, it is based on outcomes of the experiments. Okay, so first of all, experimental probability is also known as empirical probability. Okay, so that is just a different name. Okay, second thing is that experimental probability of events is based on actual experiments. Okay, that is what I told you. That is the experimental probability of events is based on actual experiments whatever like whatever experiments you did may it be tossing a coin may it be a throwing a dice everything that you are doing whatever outcome that you are getting say based on thousand trials one lakh trials ten thousand trials whatever values that you are getting based on that if you are judging that how many times you got a head how many times you got a tail that is called experimental probability okay so second thing is that this experimental probability is calculated based on the results obtained as i told you the experimental probability is calculated based on the results obtained in your experiments and these are only estimates these are not the exact values i will again repeat these are estimates because if suppose you did one experiment 10 times if you're doing the same experiment 10,000 times or say 100 times every time your experimental probability will be different okay so I have written it for you, same type of experiment conducted at different times will give you different results. Same type of experiment conducted at different times will give you different results. Let me take a quote from your NCRT textbook. This thing was written in your NCRT. I have taken it from there. In 18th century, there was a person, Comte de Buffon. He tossed a coin 4,040 times. And in, in that 4,040 times, he got... 2048 heads so what is the probability of getting a head based on his experiment 2048 by 40 40 like 4040 which is equal to 0 0.507 similarly there was another person je carriage he tossed a coin 10,000 times and got 5067 heads so what is the probability of getting a head based on his experiment 5067 by 10,000 that is 0 0.5067 and there was a third person who did it 24,000 times, okay? So when he did that experiment for 24,000 times, he got 12,012 heads. So what is the probability of getting a head based on his experiment? It is 12,012 divided by 24,000, that is 0 0.5005. So you might be wondering why we are calculating probability like this, okay? So I have given you the formula very initially, that is experimental probability is given as number of trials in which event happened divided by total number of trials. This is how we calculate experimental probability. The number of trials in which event happened divided by total number of trials. For example, if suppose I flipped a coin, if I tossed a coin say 10 times, okay, if I tossed a coin 10 times, in that 10 times, these are the things that I got. First, I got head, then tail, then tail, again tail, then head, then tail, head, head. This was my result. And 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. Okay. So these 10 results I got. So the first time when I did, I got a head. Then I got tail, then again tail, then again tail, then again head. After that, I got tail, head, head, tail, and edge. So these are total 10 results because I did the experiment 10 times. So if I'll ask you based on this experiment, what is the probability of getting a head? 
what is the probability of getting a head so now count how many times i'm getting head one two three four and five so five times i got it so number of head is equal to five and what is the total number of trials in which i did this experiment 10 so this is my probability 5 by 10 which is nothing but equal to 1 by 2 of getting a head based on this experiment right so this is what experimental probability means so this person like these persons did it for 10,000 times and 24,000 times and got different values as I told you because if you'll do the same type of experiment different number of times your result will vary because this experimental probability is based on the outcome of the result okay so as you can see here as the number of trials increase the experimental probability of getting a head or tail settles down to half right see initially if i'll show it to you this person did it for 4040 4, 4, times he got 0 0.507 as the probability of getting a head second person he did it for 10000 times and he got the probability of 0 0.5067 a bit closer to 0 0.5 when Carl Pearson did it, he did it for 24,000 time and he got a probability of getting a head at 0 0.5005. So as you are moving towards like greater number of trials, your probability of getting head or in the case of tail will move towards half, right? This half or 0.5 is nothing but theoretical probability of getting a head or a tail. Now let me tell you, what theoretical probability is okay so theoretical probability is also known as classical probability that is based on possible outcomes always remember that theoretical probability is based on possible outcomes in experimental probability it was based on the outcomes that we are getting theoretical probability is based on what are the different possibilities of outcome and always remember that whenever you are calculating theoretical probability all the outcomes are equally likely right all the outcomes are equally likely so first point is very important that it is based on possible outcomes second point it is calculated with an assumption that all experiments have equally likely outcomes say if i am tossing a coin i know that possible outcomes are head and tail so i will assume that it is a fair coin and the chance of getting a head or a tail are equally likely Similarly, if I am throwing a dice, if I am throwing a dice, I know that I can get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. So the chance of getting any of the numbers is equally likely. This is how I will calculate the theoretical probability. So theoretical probability is given by the following formula, number of outcomes favorable to event E divided by number of all possible outcomes of the experiment, right? Theoretical probability is given as number of outcomes favorable to event E divided by number of all possible outcomes of the experiment. For example, suppose I have a die and I am throwing it and I want my, like this is my experiment of throwing a die. Okay, now this is my experiment. My outcome, like my favorable outcome what I think is my favorable outcome should be uh, a prime number okay i want that my favorable outcome should be a prime number so i know that when i'll conduct an experiment i can either get a one two three four five and six but i want my event is to get a prime number so what are prime numbers from this two three and five remember one is not a prime number because it has only one factor so two three and five are my prime numbers right so what is my theoretical probability of getting an E? Number of outcomes favorable to event E. Out of these six outcomes, one, two, and three are my favorable outcomes. So favorable outcomes are three, and total number of possible outcomes, six, which is equal to half. So the probability of getting a prime number is half. So this is the meaning of theoretical probability. So I hope now you can easily differentiate between a theoretical probability and experimental probability and the concepts are clear now. We'll see more and a lot of questions in the next set of videos. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe the channel for more updates and more concepts. Have a nice day. Thank you.